My name is Itamar Cohen, and I am a postdoc fellow at the Politecnico di Torino. I will present the paper, Self-Adjusting Advertisement of Cash Indicators with Bandwidth Constraints. This is a joint work with Gil Insiger and Gabriel Scalosub from Ben Gurion University of the Negev. Network caching is a fundamental building block in multiple networking environments. Commonly, a user is equipped with one or more caches. If the user fails to retrieve the requested datum from a nearby cache, then he has to access a remote server, thus causing a high cost in terms of delay, energy, and bandwidth. To help the user decide in which cache to access, each cache periodically advertises an indicator, which is a compact data structure that represents the list of items currently stored in the cache. Using these indicators, the user can select a cache to fetch the requested datum from. Such indicators are widely used in multiple networking domains, such as content delivery networks, 5G networks, and information-centric networks. We now zoom in into the indicator's advertisement mechanism. Due to bandwidth constraints, the cache usually cannot advertise a full list of the items it stores. Instead, the cache advertises a compact representation, for instance, a balloon filter. Such small indicators save a lot of bandwidth and space, but are inaccurate. That is, they exhibit false positive indications. The cache may use larger indicators that are more accurate. However, due to bandwidth constraints, the cache may advertise such a large indicator only once in a while. This results in an increased probability of false indications due to staleness. For instance, the user is now looking for item 888 that was evicted from the cache after the cache has transmitted the last advertisement. The item is not stored in the cache anymore, thus causing a false positive event, resulting in an unnecessary cache access. Furthermore, consider the case where the user is looking for item 666 that was inserted into the cache after the cache has transmitted the last advertisement. The user doesn't know that 666 is already stored in the cache and therefore accesses a remote server. This is a false negative event. Sometimes it is possible to save bandwidth by sending delta updates that only include the list of changes since the last update was sent. In our example, only the bit indexed to was changed since the last advertisement. Hence, sending a delta update is cheaper than sending a full update. However, when the number of changes since the last advertisement is large, sending such a delta update is not beneficial anymore. We assume that whenever this is cheaper, the cache advertises only Delta updates. To understand the importance of the advertisement strategy, consider this graph. The graph illustrates the probability for a false negative event as a function of the update interval, namely the number of requests between subsequent updates. Note that both axes are logarithmic, and still the plot shows a steep increase. In particular, when the update interval is 1k, then the false negative probability is 
10%. As we have just seen, every false negative event may result in an unnecessary access to a remote server at a cost which is, that is typically at least 10 times the cost of a cache access. Paying a penalty of 10 in 10% 10 of the requests may translate to doubling the expected cost of a data access. We now see a similar plot, but for the false positive probability. However, the false positive probability increases with the update interval at a much lower slope. Practical implementations of cache advertisement currently use some crude estimations and rules of thumb. For instance, the widely used Squid Cache advertises its content once in an hour, and indeed, its spec relates to tuning the update interval and the indicator size as an open problem. I shall now overview our model. An access to a remote memory costs M, that is higher than the cost of an access to a cache. We normalize costs so that the cache access cost is one. U denotes the update interval measured by the number of requests between subsequent updates. I denotes the indicator size. We consider bandwidth constraint where the average bandwidth used for advertisements is, bound, is bounded to at most B bits per request. Hence, if the cache sends a full indicator of size I once in every U requests, we must have I over U at most the bandwidth budget B. Our goal is to find a configuration minimizing the expected total cost while satisfying the bandwidth constraint, where the total cost is the sum of the cache access cost and the memory access cost. And by configuration, we mean the tuple of an indicator size and an update interval. Let us overview our algorithmic concept. To get some insights about the problem, we consider two distinct traces, namely Scarab and Wiki. Of course, full details about the traces and the evaluation settings are in our paper. For each trace, the pink left bar shows the cost obtained by one configuration, and the black bar shows the cost obtained by another configuration. The figure shows that the pink configuration that does better for Scarab, does worse for Wiki. We now vary the cache policy and observe the same phenomenon, namely a configuration that is superior for one concrete setting is inferior for another setting. Finally, varying the cache sizes unveils a similar phenomenon. We conclude that no single fixed static configuration does best in all distinct settings. Hence, we suggest using an adaptive algorithm that self-adjusts the configuration once in some t seconds. We now turn to detail our algorithm, CAB, standing for cache indicators, advertisement with bandwidth constraints. Our algorithm is composed of two modes of operation, namely full indicators and delta updates. While the full indicator mode, intuitively we try to reduce the penalties of misindications by equalizing the penalty incurred by false positives and false negatives. Typically, the cost of a false negative is larger than that of a false positive. This is because a false positive typically results in an unnecessary cash access 
at a cost of one. However, a false negative typically results in an unnecessary memory access at a cost of M, while the user could have retrieved the datum from the cache at a cost of one. To equalize the penalties of false positives and false negatives, we therefore would like to have a single false negative event for every M minus one false positive event. To do so, we tune our configuration as follows. We recall that the main source for false positives is inaccuracies in the indicator itself. And therefore, when there are too many full false positives, we enlarge the indicator. On the other hand, when there are too many false negatives, we decrease the update interval, thus decreasing the staleness, which is the source of false negative events. We'll now overview CAVS Delta Updates mode. Intuitively, advertising either one change in the indicator once in a second or 10 changes once in 10 seconds require the same bandwidth. However, advertising one change every second reduces staleness, thus reducing the false negative probability. Hence, once at the delta updates mode, we use the minimal possible update interval and focus solely in adjusting the indicator size to comply with the bandwidth constraint. However, when the cache's content rapidly changes, it may become impossible to satisfy the bandwidth constraint using delta updates, even if we shrink the indicator to its minimal feasible size. Once this phenomenon happens, we increase the update interval to B over the size of the minimal feasible indicator, I min. Thus, we verify that we satisfy the bandwidth constraint by sending I min bits once in every update interval. This implies also returning back into the full indicator regime whenever the bandwidth constraint dictates. We conducted an extensive evaluation study using eight real world traces, three cache sizes, and four state of the art cache policies. This experiment evaluates the performance of CAB. The empty square represents the cost obtained by a naive no indicator policy that always accesses the cache first, and in case of a cache miss, accesses the memory. The cyan rectangle shows the cost obtained by CAB. Finally, the pink circle depicts the cost obtained by a theoretical optimal static configuration. This static configuration is known only in, re in retrospect, and we found it using exhaustive brute force search over numerous optional configurations. The results show that for most settings, CAB reaches a cost that is only slightly, ha slightly higher than that of the theoretical optimal static configuration. Furthermore, in some cases, the dynamicity and self-adjusting nature of CAB allows him to obtain a lower cost than that of the optimal static configuration. To conclude, selecting advertisement strategy was an open problem in both research and practical systems. Due to the dynamic characteristic of cache traces, there is no one fits all good static configuration. Hence, we designed CAB algorithm, which is dynamic and self-adjusting. Our evaluation shows that CAB provides close to optimal results in various settings, while complying with the bandwidth constraints. Finally, recall that CAB stands for Cache Indicators 
advertisement with bandwidth constraint. Interesting work and uh, great talk, uh, Itamar. Um, let's see if we have questions on the Slack channel or else I can go ahead. Uh, okay, so, uh, so I was wondering if you can uh, provide some sense of how big the Bloom filters are in your setup or uh, what is the typical size of Bloom filters in practical deployments? And uh, can you also comment on the available bandwidth? Because you also mentioned about use cases of 5G networks where I, I presume the bandwidth is not a problem or is it, it's plentiful. Um, can you comment on those two parameters? Yes, so uh, we use the uh, simple uh, Bloom, Bloom filter. Well, actually it is, um, sorry, uh, counting Bloom filter but that the cache uh, uses locally, but for advertising, it's uh, sufficient to, to advertise only a simple Bloom filter which, uh, in which every, uh, count, every, every counter is uh, reduced to a single bit, whether the count is uh, larger than zero or not. And, uh, but uh, we are, uh, analysis and our uh, concept may be used also for uh, other uh, indicators. Uh, as for the your other question, so uh, sometimes uh, the bloom filter can be rather large because uh, for instance, there is a CCOM paper about uh, Akamai's uh, CDN uh, and they uh, talk about the bloom, bloom filter size of uh, tens of uh, megabits. So for that size, even if you send a bloom filter, sending the whole bloom filter is rather large. And if you, even if you think about sending only the Delta updates, only the list of changes, so uh, it'll uh, just uh, indicating a single change, you need a log of uh, this, of the size of the bloom filter. And if you have some uh, tens or hundreds of uh, changes since the last update, this is already also rather large. Um, thank you. And uh, let's see. Uh, I think the other question that I had was about, uh, you mentioned that CAB adjusts, adjusts the uh, indicator size, specifically when the false positive rate increases, then you uh, increase the bloom filter size, for example. Um, so does this mean uh, you have to rehash some of the keys because you are now increasing the uh, bloom filter size? Probably you have more slots now. Um, uh, what, what is the cost there and how does this affect uh, um, the, the performance in some way? Yes, yeah, so actually the... Uh, of course, the changes are, although the algorithm is dynamic, we change, we make these changes only once in a while. It should adapt to changes either in the uh, ca caching policy or in the uh, trace, but it, it, uh, the changes are not too frequent. And uh, we also, I don't remember the exact numbers from the paper, but we talked about the overhead and uh, we showed that uh, it is a uh, rather uh, uh, neglect and uh, negligible uh, with respect to the if you have a large enough intervals and uh, currently the hashing uh, can be done rather fast and of course some of the work may be parallelized by using banks in the uh, bloom filters and the uh, table and so on okay Thank you. I have. I think we have one question from the audience. Uh, if you can unmute yourself and yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, I have. I have two comments. One is uh, the weighted balancing of the false positives and false negatives really represents a kind of L1 norm of optimizing the average uh, penalty. But in some cases, you may care about the likelihood of having to go to a distant server. It's kind of yes, no. So it's an example of a valid measure, but I would consider others as well. Uh, the other one is that it may be interesting to enter cash size into the equation. After all, it's also money, resource, energy, everything. And if the cash is larger, that's another way of having to go less to the, uh, to the remote server. So it's a trade-off. It's an add-on that you can stick onto this paper at that dimension. 
because you implicitly, I think, assume the given cash size and under that optimize the, the advertisement. Yeah, so for the first one, you said, yes, you're right. Well, actually, even the method of uh, equalizing the cost is a kind of uh, intuitive way to reduce costs, but uh, yeah. we, don't, we don't have formal guarantee that this is the best way. So indeed, you may say that for me, false negative are much, much more important. Yeah. Uh, and as for your second comment, we actually don't assume in anything about the cache size. The, this, the, the, good, the beautiful thing is that the algorithm adapts itself. It just counts the false negatives and the false positives and it no. adjusts itself. According yes, to of, co of course, you don't assume, but indirectly the cache is there and the optimization yeah. is only on the advertisement. In principle, if you were planning a system, you could also uh, try to optimize the cache size together with this. Again, it's, it's just broadening the scope. It doesn't uh, contradict, contradict anything in the paper, just uh, adding a dimension. Yes, thanks. Thank you, Tamar, for the uh, great talk and uh, great questions from the audience.